Yeah, yeah. Big shout out to Gully TV. You heard it first. Kareem Reed, Fairville, August, so you know who it is. Gully TV. Back this nigga down. <laughs> I'm telling you. They good, they got the, the NBA coach, the muscle guy. Um when you was at when you was playing in college, you played against Fresno State, right? Yeah, we played against Rayford, yeah. Tell me about that game. It was crazy, man. It was crazy. You know, of course me and Rayford getting a chance to play against each other in college. But, you know, I guess growing up, you know, our little battles or whatever. We never got a chance to play when we got Fresno State in Arizona, that's a shootout. Okay. Uh I guess we both had great games. We got to see New York City, we got to put on for New York City, you know, on CBS. It was a great game. We got to shoot the camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make it out the gutter team with me, you know, yeah. <laughs> Community service, what's up? Yeah, what's up? Brought you some gifts from a brand too. Yeah, yeah my mom was right there. Some some know you know you got some more shirts. Mm -hmm. Out of all the guards that you played against come up, coming up in New York City, who gave you the most red? Who, who, stood, who, who, who was defending you baseline to baseline? Oh, it was the cause. I mean, it, guess what? I mean, I guess, like I said, we grew up together. It was Rafa, of course. Rafa and Stefan was that. Oh, they was playing D2? Yeah, I mean, everybody at that time, we all played, though. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah, like at that time, everybody's, you know, everybody's at their best, you know what I'm saying? So that's what it was. When we grew up, you know, every, you, go, you get to the park, you playing against, you don't know who you're going to show up and play against. Like, so, growing again, it's from every day from 11 years old, mm -hmm. 11, 11, 12, 13, 14, before Steph, you know, before all I came, all us came into our own name, right? You know, we was 11 year old guys trying to, you know, come up with us. So we played them in young life, you know, with the AAU ball together. Technically, I already know how you got the name, but share with my viewers how you got the name, the best kept secret, who gave it to you. I mean, of course, you know, it was the, the legendary, you know, Tango and Cash, you know, Duke and Tango, you know, okay. 55th. Once again, me playing with that with that age, with that, that group, and we getting a chance to play as high school kids. As I guess I was in 10th grade and Steph was in 9th grade, and Mousy, big shots to Mousy, you know, Mousy Dream Team, we, he always bring out the top high school players. Right. And about three, four games into the season, I'm, I'm, I'm playing or whatever and stuff like that. But I'm, like, I want a name or whatever, you know, because that's what you know going to 157, going to these street ball games was about getting a name, getting right. your record or whatever. So I guess one day, you know, after a while, the, the announcer just ran out. Tango and them just ran out on the court. I got a name for him. I got a name for him. You know what I'm saying? We've been looking for a name all summer for him. Right. I got it. It's the best kept secret, you know, because like I didn't have no name. It was like, you know, who was a kid after every game? They looking at the box scores or, you know, or big games. And I'm winning them, you know what I'm saying? Something like that. And I didn't have that name, you know, that Steph had at that age. You know, Stephon was probably in the top 11 grade and in the top 11 year old in the country at that okay. 11, 12 years old. Steph was already getting that commodity and that, that newspaper articles and stuff like that, being tabbed as the next, you know, thing from New York. So me playing against him. And the guys that I was playing against got brung attention. You know, we had older guys with a mixed team. You know, we had three, four high school kids, but we had the OGs on the team too. So it was like right. the older guys. So it was like, you know, out of the older guys and then the two new young guys, it was like, it's hard for me to find, you know, find some time. And I just guess every night I was putting in that work. And Tell me like, what wow. it was like being Ron Artest point guard. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me what that was like. It was crazy. I mean, you know, playing with Ron, never, you know, playing against him and Sham at LaSalle High School and him being a man child and me, you know, they, they younger than me, come to see them play, you know, you know, after me or before me, at, you know, I'm playing 17s and 16s, they're playing, you know, before me, before our games or whatever and watching right. them play and be like, man, this guy's a man child and then seeing him, you know, his, his, his take at St. John's and then getting a chance 
when he's in Indiana to him to come back to street ball and play with us, you know, and things like that. And I got a story. It was one game. I guess it was a semifinal game. And we in a battle. And I guess I threw him an alley-oop or whatever. I threw the ball next to the rim, and he hits the rim and splits his hand. Uh, hits his whole hand. Split. This, this is the guy that's the in the lead. The, the million dollar, dollar hand. Right? Right. Everybody's going crazy. Fat Joe's going crazy, this and that. Ron comes to the bench and say, yo, get, get some tape. We're in the park. This ain't no first aid yeah. kit, anything like this. He's like, man, give me that great tape. You know, the great tape was the fix the rims. Right. Boy taped his finger up with the, with the great tape. Duct tape. And, with duct tape and went back out there. <laughs> I said, man, this is an animal. And this guy was making 60 million at this time. You know right. what I'm saying? Even thing with Steph, you know, us in the parking lot. And Steph is a future Hall of Fame straight from the NBA Finals. And he's coming to uh, on 55th. 55th. You know. Being as though uh, both you and Stephon both were point guards, how did y'all manage to handle the reins and shit? Y'all just go ahead. You get them. I, I get mean, em. yeah, I think once again, we was, I guess, you know, you look at, how James Harden and Kyrie is is meshing right now where you know he's more I was you know he's more a scorer or whatever stuff like that at certain times or whatever right everybody's gonna play a point especially now his position is basketball but back then you know Park is you know we grew up when, I, when we go back to 11 years old it was five guards it wasn't no big man, <laughs> you know man? Right. so we got used to that you know right. what I'm saying and then I guess eventually when you you know you're playing older and then it's the two guards or a forward a small forward a center whatever but i guess now it's going back to that game where it's a position is basketball where anybody can bring the ball up so i guess that's what it was and like you said whoever's hot yo you take it Absolutely. you know stuff like that yeah. and we both was playmakers so it made it hard for people to, to stop us because we both was playing guards what was it like playing for such a um a basketball program with such a rich history I mean, it was great. I mean, I guess I was lined up like that. When once I, you know, when I started, when I fell in love with basketball, I was just playing with, you know, a little local team in my neighborhood. And then, you know, my brother took me down to to Young Life, right. which was, you know, a, a program on that time. It wasn't Riverside and Gallagher, but these was, you know, at that time it was, you know, nine to ten AAU teams in in New York City. You know, right. this guy had one, this guy had one. So we played together then. You know, it wasn't as prestigious to a, 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 a sense, but then me going to the legendary Riverside Church, playing in right. Riverside Church, then me going to a National Power High School at St. Raymond's, I guess coming to University of Arkansas was easy for me. Right. I guess the state or me getting going away from, so far away from home was difficult for me. But I guess fitting right in and, and going to a prestigious, uh, prestigious college, this is what I wanted. You know, as a McDonald's World American coming out of high school, going to a school like here, just coming up the national championship, yeah. I guess that was the more pressure. But, you know, getting a year under my belt to so see that. So when you went there, they had just... Yeah, they just had one. I had just, I signed, I signed, they had just won the national championship. I signed and then they won the national championship. So I, you literally stepped into Clint McDaniel's shoes? Yes, and Corey Beck. Yeah, you know, it's funny, I just spoke to them, actually, <laughs> and I told them, actually, Corey's still here. But yeah, I just stepped into their shoes. And actually, I sat out my first year. I was here with them when they went back. So okay. what happened was they won it. I got here, and the first day on campus, I got a letter from the NCAA that I was ineligible. Okay. So my freshman year, I really sat out. And the fr my freshman year, he went back to the national championship. And it hurt me so bad because every day, Coach Richardson said, would say, to this day, if I had Kareem Reed, we would have won it back to back. Yeah. So if you look at it, the year, I, the year, the year before I got here, they won it. The year I got here, they lost in the championship. And the, my first year we played, uh, we made it to Sweet 16. I didn't know that you were so close to that so, squad, yeah, I was so, man. Yeah, I was so close so, to that squad. Um, yeah, you know, that you was... played pickup games with, with oh, Carlos yes, Williamson? Yes, I threw out of to Carlos Williamson. I threw it in the corner to Scotty Thurman. Oh. You know, like I said, I, I, I got that 40 minutes of hell from them top two guys, right. you know, those two, those were the top two defensive guards in the nation okay. at that time, Corey Beck and Clinton. Clinton yeah. Big yeah. shout outs to them, you know, they they paved the way for me where right. hand checking was a must, you know. But see us playing that year, playing big schools and, and big universities and all these top guards coming out of school and Clint McDaniels and Corey Beck locked them boys up, right. you know, and me getting a taste. I didn't get to practice with them, but, you know, open gym and as much chance I got to sit with them and play against them, even if it was open gym after practice, they stand after practice. Now after practice, it turned into 
full court. Right. You know, and stuff like that, or me playing one on one with those guys. So what was going on full court? It was full court five? one on one. Who it was, was your no, five? it wasn't even five. It was really one on ones. It was one on one full court. Okay. That's how you know we we grew up with the one on one full courts or whatever stuff like that. So. Of course, me with five, six dribbles, got to get past Corey Beck right. and Clint McDaniel, which were two of the premier defensive guards in the nation. Yeah. So just imagine me coming from New York, already got that, got that with me. Yeah, you know. But got these guys, are, yeah, they, these guys, are, <laughs> these guys are different. These guys play defense. These right. guys, not saying we didn't play defense in New York, but these guys were known for that, and they hand checked you to death. You know, that's before that little rule, you couldn't touch nobody. These guys would literally direct you where you wanted to yeah. go. They put that arm on you, that, that five that five finger claw on you, and it was so like you directed. So being as though you was there, the documentary didn't rub you the same. I was screaming, I was out of my mind. <laughs> I was all over the place. I watched that shit like uh -huh. five times. Yes. Man. I mean, I was there, I was in it. Yeah. I was in, I was, I, I watched it firsthand. And I wanted to be in the fire, you know what I'm saying? But I guess that's what made me so hungry. My, my eventually my red shirt freshman right. year, where I got freshman in the conference. I, you know, I led the conference in assists. I got probably six, seven SEC con freshmen of the week. Okay. You know, so I guess me sitting out and getting that tutelage under them and listening and watching Coach Richardson and watch how eventually pros do it gave me an upper hand. So the next year when I came back, I guess I was already a, a sophomore, a junior, you know what I'm saying? As a fresh, you know, with that, I was still a freshman classified, but I already had the mind of a, a junior, like, you know what I'm saying? Watching them guys play. What was it like playing for Coach Nolan Richardson? You know what that means, that means to, to us. Yes, that means, you know I mean? that means everything to me. I mean, you know, he, him giving me a chance, you know. Coach Richardson, you know, when I met Coach Richardson, like I said, we, uh, there's a story where I met Coach Richardson at, I didn't meet him, my high school coach was, God bless, you know, Tom Kachowski. My high school coach and Tom Kachowski was in Subways in Michigan. Okay. And this was when ABCD was in Michigan. Okay. And I'm out there with all them hitters. I didn't even post it. I guess I didn't even post it. Beat it. I was a sophomore. I just transferred over. I just had a good, good sophomore year, whatever. Right. But ABC camp was for all the top players in the country. But my coach had a, a, a relationship with you know all the top guys: George Ravlin, big shout out to George Ravlin, Sonny Ficaro, Gary Prince. You know the right. big time guys that was in basketball that was running New York basketball. Not saying New York, the world basketball. George Ravlin was Nike. You know Sonny Ficaro was one that got you know if you watch Sonny Ficaro got shoes guy. He was yeah. the guy that vintage, you know, the sneakers, the sneakers, the yeah, yeah. The, the, the Dita you know, hustle. The Dita guy. <laughs> right. So, you know, it was an honor for me to go there. Right. So one day, and I guess, you know, my coaches told me this, you know, years, you know, years and years after, and we expressed this, they told Coach Richardson that they needed, he needed to come watch me. Out of 100 players, probably the, I was probably the ninth, when I look back at it, I was like the ninth point guard in that country, and yeah. the ninth point guard in that camp. Okay. You know, you had Jock Vaughn, you had Randy Livingston, all them guys. That was, you know, they was, they, that was their time. Right. And coach said, you need to go look at this, you know, you need to go look at this left-hand point guard. He's only a sophomore, but I can see him fitting your, you know, fitting your style of basketball. When you start naming those guys, mm -hmm. he told me a real, real good, accurate assessment of your age. Mm -hmm. He truly blessed. You look like a young man. <laughs> you dig? Like, when you said Jock Vaughn and yes. all, I'm like, man, this nigga. Uh-huh, yeah, I was just on the phone with, I guess, Randy Livingston. Big shout out to Randy Livingston. LSU. LSU, yes, was number one, like I told him. Yeah. I, it was an honor, you know. Yeah. I followed Randy Livingston, Jock Vaughn, and, and Jason Kidd. Right. Those who I looked up to. Right. I was around Steph. I got the two loose. Me and Steph. Steph taught me how to be take basketball as business. You know, oh, I was no. I was you know Steph at an early age. He was basketball was business for him. It was work. It was, job. It was right. his job, yeah. and I was graced to be under him. You know, to to let me know this, and I guess yeah. that was changed my whole atmosphere about basketball. Me spending time with Stephon Marbury. So I want to salute. You know him. Hopefully getting Hall of Fame doing his thing in China, but that's what it was. Him seeing him, right. seeing his makeup, see how his his dress rehearsal. Yeah. So seeing that at an early age, you know, and then going back to Coach Richardson, it was just like a black coach. You know, my coach, big shout out to Gary DeSeas, my high school coach, you'd think he was black. You okay. know, how he was, you know, hard on us, throwing us out of practice, somebody tough, somebody being a father figure. Father figure. So, you know, I had father figures during my my life, you know, where I didn't have a father. My father passed away my father was in a drug game so I didn't have a, a dad you know my mom was on the street so I, I needed that that figure and you know guys Thurman Player Gary DeCesar uh Mousy you know Carello uh 
course, you know, Nolan Richardson, those four guys played my dad and my mom in, in different parts of my life, okay. you know, so that's what it was. Shout you out know, to the coaches. You know, shout out to the coaches I had. So coach was another chop on the block, not saying another chop on the block. Coach was the grand, you know, finale, the king, you know, him and John Thompson, you know, John Thompson and uh, Coach Chaney, you know, rest in peace to those rest two guys, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But those were pillars. In the in the black community and pillars in the black in the college basketball Let association. Me ask you something. Even though those guys wasn't your coach, they was black. So when they seen you, they still said something. Still said something. They still recruited me. They still, you know, what I'm saying things like that. So and I guess it was like a, a, a close niche. You know, coach was always on the phone with them. We 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 see them in, in different tournaments right. and you know things like that, or just on the, the in the pass by maybe at. Like you said, in the tournament, seeing these guys, you know, us, the freshman y'all set out, us playing Al Allen Iverson. You know, that, you know, me and, Al me and Allen came out the same year. You know, we was top two point guards in the country as in the year, that year. Okay. He didn't get um, give me some insight on what it was like being a celebrity and part partying in these, these nightclubs in New York City in the late 90s. Savoy, Speed, the tunnel and all this. Take me back to these Jimmy's. Yeah, it was it was crazy. Like I said, I'm in I'm in high school or, or going away in college and coming back or whatever in, in, in some of these spots and really seeing what it was. Like you said, you have section, you have sex money over there from the Bronx, you have MU over there, and you have you know what I'm saying my block over there Burnside. It was it was crazy with, and then you have you know you go to some spots, it's cats from Brooklyn and everywhere, crews from Brooklyn, all that time. It was crazy in the '90s. Right. Just partying, nightlife in Arkansas. I, I mean, in, in New York. You know, coming back to Arkansas and not having no nightlife and then going back there, older, being able to go in these clubs, now I'm 21 and all that, and seeing what was going on, you know, having to protect, you know, in the, in the bathroom, you like, wow, you didn't know sometimes in the bathroom, you go in there, it's, it's, sex, it's sex, drugs, and rock and roll yeah. in there, you know what I'm saying? What is, not it knowing. Like, what is it like when one of these big, iconic street hustlers, he full of champagne, the hand of spy, and he see you, and he say, "Oh shit!" Oh yeah. I Tell mean, him what that's like. Man. Oh, it's like everything. I mean, it's, it's, it's going to get that love from the the, the 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 local DJ, and you walk in the spot, and he's saying, you know, cutting the music off and saying, "Yo, let's give it up," or you know what I'm saying? Big shout out to Kareem Reed, you know, the high school All American, you know, and, and throwing my throwing my accolades out in the club, you know, that took right. it boosts your, your your street your street cred and your, your lady cred to a whole different no to a whole different thing, especially to shake hands with. You know what I'm saying, Nori or or six of them from Murder Unit or go over there and, and, and say what up to the, the Soundview guys or whatever and stuff like that. And coming back from high school, you know, coming back from college, yeah, that was big. You know, people that some people didn't probably know who I was or wonder what happened to me. And me coming home, even the cross seas when I'm leaving the cross seas, or even when I go home now and seeing, you know, in some of these spots and, and the love that I still get in New York City. It's, it's tremendous, you know what I'm saying? It, it's just, that's, that's what people live for sometimes, you know what I'm saying? So getting some of them endorsements from them, them street guys, right. that was that's everything that was making so much money and stuff like that. Or even now for some of these street guys coming home, like, you know what I'm saying, Kevin Childs, and some of the Brooklyn and Queens cats that was making money when I was playing basketball come home now for me to see them, you know, after 15, 20 years and, and, and they still getting that love or whatever, things like that. So I guess that's where... You know, the legacy lives on, you know what I'm saying? I guess that's what it was. I was, you know, I can, I can, even in basketball, I was, I guess I was versatile. I could be with the street guys, I could be with the basketball sports guys, I could be in this neighborhood, I could be in this neighborhood, I could be in Arkansas one night, be in New York another night, in Memphis in another night. I guess that New York and, and my personality and, and my work that I put in, I'm good everywhere across the country. Like, I, I partied in France, you know what I'm saying? Like, I let, you know, people that came out to France, uh, and see me play or whatever, and the, 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 the way I live, you know what I'm saying? I guess I live, like I said, I was probably one of the guys that did make the NBA, but I got the respect and I live like the NBA player. So, I mean, big shout outs to that. Was it someone that you were shocked was a fan of yours? You you encountered them and they like, damn, man, and you like, damn, you famous in a motherfucker. I'm a fan of yours, but they was blown away by me, Kareem Reed. I mean, when you say that, I mean, I mean, it's, I guess nothing was. Nothing was that when you seeing, you know what I'm saying, with with Jay Z and, and people like that, Jay Z and Fat Joe and I guess Cali, you know what I'm saying? I was just telling you about the Nori dinner. I'm, I'm out there, me and my family, we out there, whatever. And I'm most time every year, me and Fat Joe spends our birthday together. We get, we got us where we at. 
So I went out there when I was at, the, I think, the Hurricane two years ago. And I posted at a big party. I had 100 people coming out there, but it wound up being like eight or nine people because the hurricane. But I still met up with Joe that night. He told me to come or whatever, went to dinner. And I'm sitting there with Nori, Nori wife, Khaled wife, and all that. And we're just talking or whatever. And like 15 minutes into it, Joe's telling a story about 55th and Kareem Reed or whatever. And Nori turns to me like, Yo, this Kareem Reed right here. And it was like, it was like, wow. It was like, wow. Like, and then he started going into history and stuff like that. And it, that that really, like, you know what I'm saying? Things like that, being around Joe or Jay-Z coming to my block, you know what I'm saying? With that, hanging out with, you know, guys with Dame Dash, you know what I'm saying? Those guys or whatever. And me getting the clout where I'm, I'm around these guys and people are talking about, you know, you never know these rappers. Now you're sitting there, these rappers want to be basketball players, basketball players want to be rappers. And that time, it was like you had your own lane, but you had the respect. And me having the respect for them or them knowing about me or you looking at Jay-Z coming to games. You know what I'm saying? Things like that. Terrence, you played for both teams. No, I didn't play. Did I was. I, I, what happened was, like I said, I think Joe talked about it. I was Joe already. We already won two years yeah. ago. And then Jay come. Yeah. But, you know, once again, I'm from the Bronx. I'm from the Bronx. I'm from the Bronx. BX stand up. But I'm, my block that I hang out is, it was, it's Harlem. Crime Square. That's where... Uh, Jay Z and, and Biggs and all them, Biggs Burke and all them hang out with Best Out. It's a crew called Best Out. And that was the location. You know what I'm saying? With that, even when we talk about the lynch mob, you know what I'm saying? Guys like that are home. Lou Sims and guys like that are home. So I grew up in that atmosphere. So with that saying, when it was time for Jay Z to come out, Jay Z was like, okay, I'm going to win it. He went after all the top street ball players. So I'm one of the top street so, ball players. Hold on. Mm -hmm. On the Blackout DVD documentary, yeah. he was courting you, right? Yeah. He was right. calling me or whatever, and like I said, that was family. It was, you know, like I said, this is they on my block every day, so it was like a bitten war. Right. So yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, yeah, it was that's a bitten war. So yeah, I got, I got a, I got a bag from them. <laughs> I got a bag from them, but I gave it back, you know, because <laughs> Joe found out about it. I had a meeting like it was a, a mom meeting. Joe right. took me up in Jimmy's, you know what I'm saying? Dark lights with the candles, <laughs> like some old Bronx Tale Mafia <laughs> shit. And asked me, what yeah, am what I doing? What, what, what the fuck's up? I heard Jay, you leaving too? Yeah. What'd he do? And I'm like, yo, he gave me that bag. He's like, where the bag at? I'm like, I, I spent some money out the bag already last night. Right. You know, we balled out the night, that night. When he brought that bag, that bag got delivered in the neighborhood. We balled out for a night. Right. And I told Jay, I told Joe, I, we balled out for the night or whatever. But he was like, okay, get that back. And I got you guys. Right. You know, and shout out to Jay-Z. I didn't have to get a bag back. You know what I'm saying? I kept the bag, but I wound up staying home. And it was loyalty because that was my guy. You know, and, they, and I won it. You know what I'm saying? We won it two years in a row, so my block was like, yo, why you leaving? And it was, you know, that's, that I guess that was the whole buildup of the, the blackout because God bless that Strick left us. Right. You know what I'm saying? Other street ball guys that was going to play with us. Went and not saying join the bandwagon. Them boys riding up and, you know, uh, Jay just signed that Reebok deal. Right. They got the Reebok bus riding was around on, New York. Was you on the team? Was you on the finish your breakfast team? No, that was that team we supposed to play. I wasn't on that finish. Yeah, I wasn't on that okay. team. Yeah, I wasn't. Tell, tell them in closing the, the, the finish your breakfast story about John oh, yeah. Strickland. So that was Strick. God, rest in peace. God bless my guy, John Strickland, a.k.a. Baby Panda. So me and him spent so much time together. He's a big teddy bear or whatever. So that was his word. You know, that was his word, and Jay, like he said, he tells his truth. Jay took it platinum. Franchise been saying, yeah. we was in Omaha, Nebraska, and he used to say that, you know, yeah. with everything. That was that was strict word or whatever. So I was there at that game that day when he passed it to, I guess, Smush or whatever. Smush, Smush made Mr. Layup. Yeah. And that was that was, that was was strict baby, that was his favorite thing. Yo, finish your breakfast. And everybody was like, and, I, and, and when you look at it in the black, everybody like, you know, we heard Strick said a million times. I've been around it, but a lot of them guys probably didn't hear it. Yeah. So Jay, like you said, so like you said, now down the line we hear it. A couple of months later, I guess Jay went right to the studio and put that took it in, to the prom, took it to the prom and put that in there, or whatever. So that was Strick. That was it. Wasn't just one time. Strick been saying that I guess since I knew him. That was a finished breakfast, young fella. You know, because Strick was always the OG. You know what I'm saying? So you get a you miss you get a foul and miss the end one. It's finish your breakfast. You know what I'm saying? Free throw, you miss. You don't finish your breakfast. So everything was finish your breakfast with Strick. And I don't know, you know, maybe somebody else know where did Strick get that from. But Strick has so many sayings. Like, Strick knowledge for basketball and big man that can pass. Like, Strick remind me of right now of Jokic from Denver Nuggets. Okay. 
Strick could bring the ball up. Strick could put on a show, and that's what Jokic is doing. So when we talk about with position, with either hand, with either hand, and that was my thing. And he could see better than some of the guards. So Strick was one of them guys that knew the game, could see the game. It was just basically physical attributes that maybe didn't make him for making a lead at that time. You know, he couldn't jump over a phone book, but he could put it in a basket. You know what I'm saying? So guys like that with with talent. So yeah, that was the, the Did first. Did one movement ever pursue you? Yes, but I think I wasn't, like I said, I wasn't involved. But I guess I was, once again, those have got a lot of them, I guess, public school. Shout out to, you know, shout out to Shane Dribbling Machine and Future. They was the, you know, that was the movement. You know what I'm saying? God bless Greg Marriott. So that was the whole thing. It was me and Rafa that day. They came to visit Rafa or whatever and put something behind Rafa. Me and Rafa was together all day. They were following us around. We just happened to have an all-star game that year, 55th all-star game. Yeah. We didn't have no uniforms. So that was a great place for anyone to go get uniforms and have 55th players put them on. So that's how it originally started. You know, and one the company was looking, you know, in, 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 the, in the city, what they always do, what these co corporate business always do. They, they, they tag themselves to somebody that's hot or whatever. So they, that day they was trying to bring and one out. Right. You know, they was talking about bringing an one out, an one clothing or whatever. You remember the first shirts with the one guys and all that? That's what, that was it. And we wound up, they was following Rafa around or whatever. And Mousy was like, yo, you know, once again, Mousy, big shout out to Mousy. Mousy had us riding around with them or whatever. So Mousy was like, yo, it's an all-star game in Riverbank. Yeah. And when we got the Riverbank, no, it wasn't no uniforms. So we was like, oh, and one got some uniforms. And so they put all of us in there. Ali Mo, Half Man, Wally, into, the, into that N1 gear. So they seen how much stuff and how much that... The atmosphere, how people on the gate, people trying to get the thing. They saw that, and I guess you know, I guess between the masterminds of, of Shane, Drill Machine, and Malloy, they put the tour together, right. and it was history. Shout uh, yeah, Shane, 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 shout out to Shane, Drill Machine. Yes, you know what I'm saying. His movement against all odds, you know what I'm saying. So things like that. So with, with that, it was just the culture. New York was the culture. You had to go to Harlem. You had to go to Rucker Park. You had to go to Kingdom. You had to go to certain parks. You know to do that. Like you know. Like now it's Dykeman, it's Gersh, you know, so it, it, it tra things travel, the tournaments, the time is changing, but it's, it's been great. You know, that New York Street basketball scene been straight. I guess I wish the kids could see it, some of the younger kids could see it, how it was back then. You know, Where did you hit that buzzer? Uh, I guess what the it was fuck two. It was, Joe, it was Joe Smith. Hitting it was Joe Smith. In the park, man. It was crazy. I mean, I guess over the years I had some, a bunch of highlights, but that was one of my highlights that night. You know. Did you really predict it? Did you really say I'm about to win this shit? Yeah, I said that. I, I, I said that. I, pro I did say that. I know I did. Because when I happened, it was that game. I, that game was so personal to me. Because, once again, that's, that's, that's P. Diddy. P. Diddy, once again, coming, out, coming in right. with that and coming in with these players. Like I said, one, we were winning, but we was a bunch of young kids or street ball players. They started bringing the NBA players. Yeah, they did. These team, these rappers and stuff like that. So it was like, wow, you running, you know. Mr. 911, Joe Smith, shout out to Joe Smith, X Me Hip. He brought college players. We wasn't, you know, some of the guys that played with us never played college. We had a couple of us go into college, yeah. but you bring a number one pick to the park, to my park, yeah. how I said. So, my park. So, it was, the game was going back and forth or whatever. And then, like I said, I turned into a whole. It's like I go, when I pull up the 55th, I go there. My mind is, I'm so hype about the game or whatever. I took everything personal. I think that's what. My high school coach installed in me. You know, I didn't have no friends stepping on the basketball court. Y'all was my friends, my homies, but once we got between this line, it was wartime. After the game, we can party, we can do whatever, but when we stepped between this 94 by 50, it was me against, that's how I ate. So that's what it was. Joe Smith was, you know, 911. It was like, I didn't know who was in the park, what was in the park, but once again, you know, if you look at my history, California came, Baron Davidson came, I had a buzzer, I didn't hit a buzzer beat against them, but I hit the winning free throws against them. You know, every time they bring these NBA guys in, I had a big game or had a highlight game or something that I did during that game stuck, represented for, for the park that made it my park. So when you look at the From documentary, you say, you say, yeah, you look at the NBA guys and they would have been like, yo, this Kareem Reed park. Because I, I stamped that, you know, I took that personal and I, and I said that, you know, that was, 55th was my, my playground, you know, everybody had different parks or whatever. I guess 55th, I inherited 55th because of the fans, the streets, you know, the guys. I didn't want to let nobody, like you said, the drug dealers, the betting, you know, even though I didn't know what was going on, but I felt that I had to carry my city. And, and that's what I did with Rucker Park, I carried my city.
no doubt. This uh, whole situation, man, you, you helped me. Um, I was able to fulfill one of my dreams today, sitting out here shooting the ball with street ball legend. It's been a lot to me. You too, man. You really too. Like I just said, man, people. everybody else has been on, on live, so I really appreciate this. But I was telling, yeah. I was telling everybody, I said, yo, I'm thinking, you know, we're going to hook up on live or whatever this and that. And you called me like, yo, we're on our way, man. I was so much respect where yeah. you came to, you came to me. You know what I'm saying? So I wish, I hope you have some oh, yeah, more time yeah, official, here man. so I can show you the city or whatever. But like yeah, I said, we, we get back to the regular scheduled program. Once again, big shout out to Gully TV, representing and whatever, Fayetteville, Arkansas. Good, big shout out to New York, Rucker Park, and all the street ball legends. That's great. Oh, man. How old are you, 21?